Thanks, First Travel, for hosting tonight. We certainly appreciate that. And just as a little bit of background, uh, Gretchen and I, along with Burst Travel as, as a whole, have conducted many, many, many of these Alaska presentations over the years. And the reason we do it is because there's so much that goes into your decision when preparing for your Alaska vacation. Whether you go on a cruise uh, or go on what we refer to as a cruise tour, either one requires a lot of planning, a lot of preparation, and it's really an exciting thing to do. Gretchen and I have talked about Alaska maybe 500 times over the years, Gretchen. I'm not quite sure how many. It's one of the few destinations in the world that's engaging, scenic, cultural, dynamic, exciting, all wrapped up into one. There's just something a little bit different about an Alaska vacation uh, as opposed to really any place else in the world. Everybody comes back feeling very, very enriched. And I think that's the number one word that, uh, well, I know it's the number one word I use describing uh, an Alaskan cruise experience, uh, but certainly a lot of people do as well. So uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about Alaska itself, a little bit about Princess itself. And while we're on that portion of the presentation, I'll clearly be boasting a little bit. Uh, and then we'll kind of put it all together and see how it works for your vacation. So just as part of the boasting part, we've been uh, voted the number one Alaskan uh, cruise line really now for 20 times in a row. We just recently in a week or a week or so ago, were awarded the award for the 20th time in a row. We're real proud of that. But what we what we don't do is rest on our laurels and we improve our product a little bit each each year or tweak it maybe as a better adjective uh, each year, each season that we go to Alaska. And coming up this coming summer will be our 55th year cruising the great state of Alaska. So we're really excited about it. Alaska is Princess's heart and soul. It's what we're best known for in the industry, even though we do cruise worldwide, Caribbean, Mexican Riviera, Panama Canal, Canada, New England, up and down the California coast, much more exotic itineraries of South America, Australia, New Zealand, the Antarctic, um, all over the breadth of Europe, and of course, full world cruises as well, along with what most people in our business consider the most uh, exotic cruise itinerary in the world, and that's Japan. So we have a ship dedicated to Japan. But tonight we're gonna to talk about Alaska, Again, it's our bread and butter, it's our heart and soul, and it's really a wonderful vacation. Most of us go to Alaska, the number one reason we say we wanna go is to see glaciers. And when you cruise with Princess between Vancouver and Anchorage, that's we refer to that as our Gulf of Alaska Voyage of the Glaciers. It's a seven day cruise. We'll talk more about it as uh, my presentation goes on but we offer two opportunities to see glaciers and that's a real key part of what we offer. So if you're going north, you visit Glacier Bay National Park with Marjorie Glacier that we're seeing in this photo here as kind of the crown jewel of all of Alaska. On almost all sailings, a couple limited exceptions, we visit Glacier Bay National Park for a full day. So we enter the bay early in the morning. Park rangers come out to the sh our ship on a small boat, board our ship, and spend the entire day entertaining our customers. You can see these folks here. They're out on deck. They're experiencing the glacier. Uh, they're dressed like you'd see people dressed in Alaska while they're visiting a glacier uh, or in Glacier Bay or other glaciers. Uh, and then as we continue north, we also visit an area called College Fjord. But the key message there is two glacier viewing opportunities. If you're coming south, there's a slight difference and you visit an area called Hubbard Glacier along with Glacier Bay National Park. Wonderful time, but the key message is two, two in a row. And then if you go on a cruise tour, and not to sound trite, but when you go on a cruise tour, that means you're cruising and then getting off the ship and cruising, excuse me, touring north of Anchorage in what's referred to as the uh, interior of Alaska. Now, most of my time when I'm presenting, I present as if we're going north 
from Vancouver to Anchorage and then touring on land, just keep in mind you can do the trip in exactly the opposite direction. You can start in Alaska and cruise south. So even though my presentation tends to focus on northbound, you can do what we call southbound just as well. But we always visit Denali National Park. And again, with limited exceptions, two nights around Denali Park. That's another key part. There's always a tour into the park itself. Denali National Park is 6 million acres. So of course, we're not gonna see all of it, but uh, by all means, there is a tour into the park that's included, uh, unless you pick a, a, a limited uh, group of ex uh, itineraries that do not, but typically a tour is included into the park itself. And then of course, wildlife is another key reason we like to visit Alaska. If you go on a cruise tour, I can just about guarantee you'll see caribou, doll sheep. When you're touring in uh, Denali National Park, uh, make sure you have your binoculars. You'll see the doll sheep on the sheer cliffs. You wonder how they got there and you wonder how they're ever gonna get down. And maybe they don't, maybe they stay there all the time, but really quite a sight. And then moose and bear are kind of the wild cards. Hopefully uh, we'll be able to present those to you as well. Um, by all means, when you're cruising in Glacier Bay National Park, be ready with your binoculars again. I've seen bear on shore right from the ship while we're cruising in, in uh, Glacier Bay National Park. So uh, the last two times I've been there, we've been cruising in into the bay. And in both cases, I saw the bear on the left-hand side. So really cool. Sometimes from a distance, it's difficult to tell if you're seeing a brown bear or a black bear. And the best way to tell, especially if you're on land, is to run. And if the, if the bear and run and climb a tree, and if the bear climbs the tree, you know it's a black bear. And if it doesn't climb the tree and just shakes the tree and, and, and uh, cuts it down, you know it's a brown bear. Anyway, that's my joke of the day. Then also uh, the Alaskan version of the gray wolf as well. Okay, So these are considered the Denali Big Five. It's a key part of why we vacation. And then also to see whales. And you'll be able to see whales almost always right from the ship when we're cruising through what's referred to as the inside passage, we'll have an onboard naturalist on board the ship um, pointing out interesting sites and hopefully including whales, all right? So again, have those binoculars ready. And as soon as uh, they're, they're seen in advance from the bridge, uh, there'll be an announcement made and hopefully you'll be able to see those whales as well. Another likely place to see whales to kind of keep in mind is uh, as you're entering or as you're departing Ketchikan, okay? I can't tell you why that's that's the case, but oftentimes you'll see them. So just as you're, as you're cruising and you're a few hours out of Ketchikan, just start looking for whales and likewise when you leave. All right. We have a wonderful enrichment program on board the ships called North to Alaska. This is where Princess really stands out. And it's uh, a program where we're presenting, or making presentations on board the ship in the theater, our, our nat uh, national uh, 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 naturalist that's on board the trip the entire seven days will conduct several presentations throughout the week. They might present just on glaciers, maybe on a wildlife. Uh, maybe on other scenery or mountains, but by all means, take part in those presentations if you're able to. When we, uh, here's, a, here's a picture of the, while we're in Glacier Bay National Park, and you can see the park ranger will be walking around the ship and you can have a nice private audience right with the park ranger. This young couple is holding a couple of real life sled dog puppies. On most sailings in Skagway, we have a real life dog musher that will board the ship and he or she will conduct a short presentation in the atrium during the day, during the time the, the uh, ship is in port. And they'll bring their real life sled dog puppies on board the ship. You can 
hold them, touch them, pat them, etc. And something I heard just the other day, Gretchen, even though I've been doing this for years, is that the mushers actually like people holding their dogs and petting them because when they become adults and they're sled dog, real sled dog racing dogs, uh, while the sled dog racer is racing at night, there's other people that are handling the dogs for them. So they really like the interaction with the people. Or you might see some axe throwing uh, demonstrations on board the ship uh, and just a myriad of other things on board the ship to do, to take part in that will all add to the trip and, and generate that enrichment that I keep talking about. A couple and of other things. Oh, go so, ahead. Gretchen. So I was just going to say those naturalists and those, um, you know, um, lectures they give, those are so fantastic. I mean, to attend those, you can just, you learn so much and it makes everything come alive. So I really recommend, um, you know, checking the the onboard newsletter to find out when those are and attend because those are really uh, beneficial to make the trip, just enhance the trip that much more. You know, you know, somebody might ask, why would I want to uh, sit in a dark theater for an hour when I'm in Alaska? And my first time to Alaska, I felt the same way. But once you do, then you realize why you did it because you, again, you, it, it brings it to life. You understand if you go to a lecture one day on glaciers, and the next day you're in Glacier Bay, you really know what you're, what you're experiencing. But down at the bottom of the screen, in the lower left-hand corner, Cook My Catch. That's a wonderful uh, program we have. Some of our fishing ex uh, shore excursions will be identified as Cook My Catch. And that's where, obviously, you can fish. And if you catch fish, you can have it prepared for you that evening on board the ship, too. So really, really a neat experience. All right, a couple of things about Princess. Then we're going to walk through a sample itinerary. We've been in business since 1965. We're headquartered in Los Angeles. We'll be cruising Alaska next summer for the 55th year. And keep in mind that if you're listening tonight and you're really interested in 2025, that will obviously be our 20th, 56th year. And by all means, that's available and open to make bookings on right now, too. The highlights that we offer, again, that enriching experience, the rail service in Alaska is dedicated to Princess uh, customers. When you see a rail car, like the photo on the right-hand side there, with the Princess logo on the outside, we actually do own that car, and the staff is our Princess employees. The Alaskan Railroad is the operating railroad with the engineer and conductor, uh, but the staff on the cars themselves are Princess staff members. The lodges that you stay in while you're on land are Princess owned and operated lodges. And the employees, uh, again, really bring everything about Princess to life in Alaska. All right, here's one sample itinerary. It's where you would fly or begin your trip in either Seattle or Vancouver one or the other, and we have a seven-day cruise where you cruise north, as far north as maybe uh, uh, Glacier Bay National Park or Juneau, that area, then cruise back south to either Victoria, or excuse me, Vancouver or Seattle. That's called an inside passage itinerary. We have a ship on Saturdays that, do, that does that, uh, Sundays as well, and it's either Tuesday or Wednesday, okay? So we have three ships on this itinerary. Uh, they vary a little bit from um, one to the other, but very little. But on this sailing, we offer one glacier viewing opportunity. It's going to be either Glacier Bay National Park. Uh, this family is viewing Marjorie Glacier right from deck, right from the deck there. It might be an area called uh, Endicott Arm, and at the end of Endicott Arm is what we call, or what is called Dawes Glacier, or it might be uh, the famous Hubbard Glacier as well. Hubbard Glacier, when you're looking at it and facing it, is actually six miles wide at the water. It begins 76 miles inland, and it's just awe-inspiring. Okay, or you might do what we call a voyage of the glaciers. I mentioned this earlier where you start your trip in Vancouver and you cruise north to Whittier, which is the port city for Anchorage. 
This likewise is seven days. You cruise, as you can see, the if you look in the lower right-hand corner where it says Vancouver, you cruise north through the inside passage in order to get to Ketchikan. It takes 30 hours. Uh, it's about 330 miles. It's a glorious day. It's your first day if you're cruising northbound. It's the last day if you're cruising southbound. Then we uh, port in Juneau, then we continue a little further and port in Juneau and then Skagway and then Glacier Bay National Park and then either College Fjord or Hubbard Glacier. So this is a seven day cruise. We end up in Whittier. If you're going on a cruise without touring, you would fly home from Anchorage. If you're doing a cruise tour, you're gonna get off the ship there in Anchorage and you're going to uh, tour north of Anchorage up in the Denali area maybe as far north as, as Fairbanks. So there's a number of different choices. So Gretchen is gonna wrap up tonight talking about how you can reach out to the BIRST staff uh, to go over things with you in much more detail. So you, rather than trying to memorize all of this or even write it down for that matter, once you sit down with one of their staff or communicate with them, they'll help you figure out which of these is the best thing for you, okay? Best thing that fits your needs. So walking through a sample trip, we're gonna walk through a trip now that begins in Vancouver, cruises north to Anchorage, and then tours on land up in the interior. So we're gonna board the ship in beautiful Van downtown Vancouver. Uh, the pier is, you can see there right in the photo here, right downtown. It's a pier called Canada Place. The ship will set sail in the uh, mid to late afternoon and cruise through the inside passage the entire first day uh, or around Vancouver Island sometimes and then back into the inside passage. It's a glorious day. We don't get off the ship. Uh, we'll have an onboard naturalist on board the entire seven days, but this, this day going through the inside passage is really key where they will... Uh, uh, again, point out lots of interesting sites and hopefully those whales as well. It always seems, Gretchen and I can, cannot guarantee the weather though, but it always seems to be 65 degrees and sunny going through the inside passage. But I know that can't be true, right, Gretchen, around Vancouver and catch again, but... Um, hey, I, I tell you, I was in uh, my bathing suit one time when we were, um, one of the cruises when I, I we were at Hubbard Glacier. So, Wow. You can have some, and then and then the te next time I was on a, that on a cruise in that area, I had my down coat on, gloves, hat, and a scarf. So you got to really prepare for just about anything. But yeah, it it was spectacular either way. It was beautiful. So then we uh, here's this another photo of the ship cruising the inside passage. You'll notice from the photos both here and here, it's a little hard to tell, but there's scenery on either side of the ship. It's really quite immaterial which side the ship you're on. Then our first port of call typically will be Ketchikan. Ketchikan's just 12 or 14,000 people. The ship docks right downtown. You get off the ship and in about 100 feet, you are right on Main Street in downtown Ketchikan. You can walk around and tour on your own if you like. You can do a shore excursion that might take you out to um, uh, Saxman Indian Village as, a, as an example where you can see uh, lots of examples of the famous totem poles. Uh, you can generally see totem pole carvers, real ones, at work um, and carving. And then our next port of call is Juno. Juno, if you're going north, like we are in our sample, it's the first opportunity to see a glacier. So you can get off the ship. You can take a tour that takes you out to Mendenhall Glacier. That's Mendenhall in the upper left-hand photo. Um, you can uh, see it by just visiting it and viewing it from the visitor center, or you can take a helicopter ride that lands out on top of that glacier. Really, really an exotic experience. This is also where you could do a whale watching experience on a smaller boat. And by all means, I've talked a lot about our enrichment program. When we're in Juneau, Libby Riddles, that's Libby Riddles on the right-hand side of the screen here. The first female Iditarod champion boards the ship and conducts a presentation on her sled dog exploits. And it really, really tells a 
incredibly compelling story. And she has Wisconsin and Minnesota roots. So we're, we're, we, we feel a little bit of a connection with her. Uh, so whale watching, Libby Riddles, Mendenhall Glacier, lots to do in Juneau. Uh, if you want to, one of our cook, one of our cook my catch fishing shore excursions takes place here in Juneau. Uh, this fella and his daughter or granddaughter are out fishing. Looks like they caught fish to me. Uh, and they, they told the fishing guide, the vendor, they wanted to have it prepared on board the ship. So the vendor will arrange that for you. And uh, the last time I was in Alaska, we did just this and we caught fish. And this is the actual platter they brought to our table. So I don't know if anybody has had dinner yet, but. Uh, you... I was going to say, you're killing me, Joe. I'm starving. Yeah. That looks Isn't... delicious. Isn't that... <laughs> Yeah. So you can tell there's two different kinds of salmon here because we caught coho and pink salmon both. And uh, the guy kind of poo-pooed the pink salmon. He said they're a little bit out of season, but I we actually enjoyed it more than the coho salmon. But a wonderful experience. Everybody surrounding us in the dining room looked over and then they looked back at their menu and they thought, well, I didn't see this on the menu any place. So anyway, real neat experience. Then as we're going north, we visit Skagway, typically, sometimes Icy Strait Point. Skagway is the port city for the gold rush of 1898. And the most famous shore excursion is the train ride climbing um, and following one of the paths the men took to, to get up into the Yukon, the Alaska Canadian Yukon to seek their fortune in gold. Absolutely superb shore excursion. Um, really exciting. The the train ride takes you to frightening heights. At about 2,500 feet, you can look down over your left-hand shoulder or left shoulder, and you can see the ship down in the port, and it looks like a little tiny boat. Here's a picture, a personal picture, of leaving Skagway. Skagway's port is at the end, very end of this long canal called the Lynn Canal. You can't see the port in this photo, but it's deep into the port here. But I urge you to go up on one of the top decks and go to the rear of the ship. About 15 minutes or 30 minutes out of Skagway and this will be your view. It's really quite surreal. Then we visit Glacier Bay National Park, okay, uh, as we're going north. And then uh, Hubbard Glacier, excuse me, uh, College Fjord in the lower center uh, of the screen where you can see up to one or two or three glaciers at any one time. And if you're coming south, instead of College Fjord, we do visit Hubbard Glacier. So two glacier viewing opportunities. It's a real key part and reason why we cruise. Then we arrive Whittier, okay? Whittier is about 60 miles from the Anchorage airport. If you're cruising on this itinerary without going on the land trip, you likely would transfer to the airport and fly home. If you're going on a tour, um, here's Anchorage. If you're going on a tour, in most cases, you will board the Prince's rail car right next to the ship, okay? You disembark the ship, walk across the pier, across the train platform and board the train. The train goes right past uh, uh, Anchorage. Here's a couple of photos of the train. Uh, in most cases, the train is gonna take you to one of our lodges uh, and in many cases, it's right to our Denali Princess Wilderness Lodge. It's about eight hours. Uh, it, our Denali Lodge is the largest hotel in all of Alaska. And it sits just a mile from the entrance into Denali Park. So this couple on the right-hand side, they're on the back side of the lodge. They're overlooking what's called the Nanana River. Say that three times in a row real quickly, Gretchen. The Nanana River. And uh, if you want to do any whitewater rafting, this is a great place to do it. Okay. And if somebody in your party wants to do it and somebody doesn't, those that stay back can watch you go by uh, right from the backside deck there. So it's really an exhilarating experience. Uh, again, this is the single road into Denali Park that we see here. And this is where the tour into Denali Park takes you. Or you might go to our Mount McKinley Lodge. Uh, it's only about 45 miles away. Uh, it's tucked way back in the wilderness by itself. 
by design. There are no scheduled activities here. You can purchase a, a land excursion if you like, uh, but it's very relaxing. Uh, it has wonderful views. If you see that deck on the right-hand side of the lodge there, it, that's the only public deck in all of Alaska that potentially has a view of Denali, okay? Formerly known as Mount McKinley, the mountain is now called Denali. And if the weather cooperates, this will be your view. The mountain itself is 41 miles away. Uh, and if the weather cooperates, this will be your view. And it's really, really quite spectacular. Now, we've also built, if anybody has seen the TV show Treehouse Masters on um, in season nine, episode nine, um, this group of people that go around the world building these elaborate tree houses built one here uh, next to the lodge. And from the lodge, you also, or from the tree house, you also have a, a view of Denali as well. Again, weather permitting and uh, that sort of thing. Now, if the weather hasn't cooperated, by all means, you can leave a wake up call at the front desk and they will call you up at two o'clock in the morning and say, come on down and you'll see the mountain. I've done this myself. And again, it's one of the reasons you're here on this trip is to see glaciers and wildlife and, and mountains and all that Alaska offers. So by all means, take them up on that offer. You might go south of Anchorage to our Kenai Lodge. I said in most cases, when you arrive Anchorage or Whittier, you board the rail cars. If you're going to our Kenai Lodge first, you take a motor coach two hours south to it and you'll uh, ride a train later in your land trip. Or you might go way east of Denali to our Copper River Lodge. Um, and in this case, you also board a motor coach to begin the land part of your trip. Uh, Copper River is uh, very remote. Doesn't look like it in this photo, but it's very remote. If anybody's ever had or wished they had or saw on the menu Copper River salmon, this is where it's coming from, the Copper River here in Alaska. And I think typically around our Twin Cities area anyway, uh, we only see Copper River salmon on the menu for about two weeks in August. And that's the only time we ever get to see it. Or you might go all the way north to Fairbanks. Okay. So that's kind of a sample trip. You might begin in Fairbanks or Anchorage and do your land trip first and then cruise south. And uh, so a couple of things I want to kind of share with you, a couple of thoughts, go over a couple of frequently asked questions. Um Questions that Gretchen and I hear all the time. And the first one that always comes up is what's the best time to go and which direction? Should I go north or should I come south? They're both uh, awesome directions. There really isn't a better one. Um, uh, it might come down to something as simple as uh, your own personal schedule or your air schedule or something like that. We start cruising in early to mid-May and end in uh, mid-September, okay? Uh, there's something extra special about each of the times of the year. If you go in the early part of the season, which incidentally is my personal favorite, uh, there's still snow in the lower elevations. It's cool and crisp, much like we probably have Alaska conjured up in our mind. If we wait until early to mid-June, all the way through August into September, or excuse me, all the way through July into August, uh, we were uh, experiencing the long growing season, the long days, and you'll see the large flowers and lots of uh, extra growth because of the long days. If you go in September, you'll see some fall colors, okay? Uh, so it's it's great really anytime. Uh, when you sit down again or communicate with uh, one of Gretchen's staff, they'll be able to visit with you about that and see what fits your needs. Gretchen already mentioned packing and dress. Let's go over that a little bit more. Pack uh, for your daytime dress, just like you'd expect to see people dressed in Alaska, blue jeans, khaki pants, hooded sweatshirts. Pack to dress in layers. Um, you can bring a winter coat if you want. I think uh, typically I would bring something that's more shoulder season 
and certainly something kind of water repellent as well. But two things to for sure bring with you are a stocking cap and a pair of gloves. Okay. So when you're in when you're in Glacier Bay National Park, that's probably the number one reason you bought this trip. And if it's a cool, misty day, you still want to be out on deck all day long. So by all means, make sure that you have that stocking cap and gloves with you. And if it is cool and misty, you'll be prepared for it and you won't have to come in. The evening dress, the spirit of the dress code for five evenings of the seven is called smart casual. And that just simply means that everybody looks nice. On two nights, the dress code and the spirit of the dress code, with the exception of the buffet, uh, is uh, referred to as formal. And on a formal night, men will or women will dress anywhere from a dressy pantsuit to a long gown. You'll see a little bit of that in Alaska. And men will want to have, of course, trousers and a shirt and uh, should have a coat and tie as well. Okay. And uh, if you pack like I do, you just take your coat and you fold it uh, backwards and you put it in a laundry, uh, dry cleaning laundry bag and it comes out looking just perfect. All right. After you've sat down, you've decided what date you want to go, which itinerary you want to go on, the additional spending that you can expect after you've made that purchase is any shore excursions from land, or excuse me, from the ports of call. So when you're in uh, Juneau, if you want to see Mendenhall Glacier, you could take a $40 city tour that takes you out to the glacier. Or you could do something that's really a polar opposite, no pun intended, where uh, it's a helicopter ride for four or $500 a person that lands out on top of the glacier and, of course, brings you back home. So shore excursions will range anywhere from on the low side, $40 or $50 a person to uh, uh, several hundred dollars, uh, up to five or $600 for some helicopter and airplane sightseeing trips. A fishing trip might be around $200, uh, that sort of thing. And then land excursions are those extra excursions you might buy from one of the lodges, okay? I would say most people don't, but uh, they're available as well. Dining at the lodges themselves, on the train, and specialty and casual dining uh, venues on board the ship uh, are such that there's an additional charge for them. However, the primary main dining is all included in your fare. Wi-Fi is additional on board the ship, and so is crew appreciation, formerly known as gratuities, okay? However, and beverages, of course, are additional as well. However, I'm going to skip here one time, a couple of things here. Well, we do have a package on board, excuse me, uh, we do have a package that includes Wi-Fi gratuities and the beverage package as well. So if you like, and most of our customers are doing so, they're purchasing this program called Princess Plus or Princess Premier, which provides those things, making them uh, included in your fare. Everybody has to have a passport. Make sure you take it out and take a look at it. It needs to be good. Uh, six months from the last day you plan to travel. So by all means, check, check it out. If you're going round trip to Seattle, uh, there is a little bit of wiggle room there where you may not need to bring your passport. So uh, Gretchen staff will visit with you about that. Uh, and of course, recommendations are such that um, it seems like a long ways off to Alaska's 2024 season. Uh, clearly it's in our world, it's really not very far away and it's, things are selling extremely well. And by all means, if you're thinking of going in 24, you want to engage right now and start making those decisions. And if you're waiting till 2025, there's no reason to wait. So give that some thought too. All right. This is a, a snapshot of our princess plus package. Uh, that can be included in your fare. It includes our uh, Wi-Fi gratuities and beverage package, two of our casual dinings, two 
premium desserts, uh, two fitness glasses to work off those premium desserts. You might need four of those glasses. Unlimited juice bar, uh, our new uh, ocean deliveries uh, charges are, are waived and likewise room service charges as well. So um, again, Gretchen staff will review this with you. If anybody has a history with the military, make sure you let us know. Uh, they, uh, Bruce will ask you for a copy of your DD-214 form. We'll send that into Princess to see if you qualify for an added shipboard credit. In the case of uh, Alaska, the shipboard credit for a seven-day cruise is going to be $100 for that person with that military heritage. And all of our ships are what we call medallion class cruising. Um, it's a wearable device. Uh, the medallion is, it's about the size of a quarter. And uh, before you cruise, you download what we call our Princess Cruises app. You register for your trip by loading, uh, by uploading your security photo and a copy of your passport. Uh, entering your uh, the credit card you're going to use on the ship and several other items, your personal information, your address, et cetera. And you, what you're doing is you're pre-registering. And then we mail this medallion to you about 10 days before your cruise. And then when you arrive at the pier, you're already checked in. All you do is show your passport, walk through security and board the ship. As simple as that. Uh, and the medallion is very powerful. It does a whole lot more. When you approach the door on your cabin, you can hear the door unlock. You just turn the latch and walk in your cabin. Um, when you're out there cruising and enjoying the ship, and if you go back to your cabin, you can look on your smart device and by virtue of the, your friends and family carrying their medallion with them, you can tell exactly where they are, so you can go find them. It's a it's a part of the app called Shipmates, and so it's really really quite phenomenal that way. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and Gretchen and I are going to um, visit a little bit more current, a little bit more live. Uh, but by all means, we thank you. Now I can't find my mouse here. There it is. All right, are you able to see me? Uh, you're muted, Gretchen, but. Yes, I can there see you. There we go, there we go, all right. So, um, so if you have any questions, you can um, feel free to put them in the chat or if you wanna unmute, unmute yourself, go ahead and do that and, and Joe or I can get those answered. But um, while you're thinking of questions or putting them in the chat box, I just wanna remind everybody, um, uh, about, um, as Joe had mentioned several times, reaching out to your Bruce Travel um, advisor. And uh, if you work specifically with one of uh, our advisors, you can feel free to email them or call them um, at the local office. We've gone to um, setting up appointments, just making it more efficient. That way people have specific time and they can the advisor can devote their time and attention to that person and finding out what they're interested in, um, looking answering some of the questions Joe said about what time of year, um, you know, what do you want to include a, a cruise tour and that sort of thing. So reach out if you know um, your advisor's email, email them or give them a call. Otherwise, you can just go to our website, burstravel.com and go to the locations. And on there, there is a contact us form. You can complete that and submit it. That will go to our concierge desk. And they will um, then reach out to somebody that is available to help you. Um, as you can imagine, this is an extremely busy time of year for all of us um, because everybody wants to get out of here for those winter vacations, first and foremost. But people are now starting to plan for Alaska because they know this is the time to book to get those ideal uh, staterooms and um, tours and shore excursions because they fill up quickly. So if that's the case, um, you can reach out and we'll get that to an, an advisor to reach back to you and let you know uh, when they can set up an appointment. And we've got an entire team that's that's working to um, get back to everybody as quickly as possible. So 
contact your advisor directly or go to the website for bruchetravel.com and fill out the contact us form and we'll get that to the concierge desk and get you um, some help as quickly as we possibly can. Um, I do see a question that came into the chat box. It says, for couples, would both travelers be required to purchase Princess Plus? Um, that would result in double paying for Wi-Fi and such, correct? So, Joe, I'm going to turn that over to you. So, if you're so you've got a double cab, and do both have to purchase the uh, Princess Plus? And that that is the policy where each person in the cabin does need to purchase it. Um, so, it would cover the gratuities for each person, which otherwise would be typically separate. Uh, the beverage package would be typically separate, um, and the Wi-Fi is if you buy Princess Plus is good for one device per person. Okay. Um, I see another question in here. Is the Princess Premier, uh, oops, um, is the Princess Premier $80 more per day per person than the Princess Plus or 80 per day per person? So the a very good question. Princess Plus, so backing up just a moment, we have a standard fare then Princess Plus is $60 more per day per person. And Princess Premier would be another $20 or $80 more than standard per day per person. Okay. Any other questions um, that you can think of? Like I said, you can feel free to unmute yourself or pop them in the chat box. Um, We'll give it a few seconds here to see if there's anything else that comes up. But um, as I did mention earlier, really now is the time to start looking at getting your, especially for 2024, um, because ideally, as Joe talked about those shore excursions, um, the, the, the train in Skagway, some of the fishing excursions, glacier tours, they do fill up very, very quickly. Um, so it's nice to be able to, you know, get your cruise booked and then get on those shore excursions as quickly as possible so that you're not disappointed and miss out on some of the more popular ones. So just out of curiosity, Burst Travel, of course, is a pretty large operation with offices and, and, and staff in uh, certainly Minnesota, South Dakota, uh, Wyoming, North Dakota. And I know you have people elsewhere in the country, but where are some of you folks from, if you don't mind dropping that in chat? There we go, Minnesota. Go oh, Vikings. Yeah. Oh, go Timberwolves. We better switch to the Timberwolves. St. Cloud, very nice. Yeah, those Vikings, come on. <laughs> I mean, I'm Minnesota, St. Cloud, Minnesota. So, um, that's one thing that I think that Joe and I have kind of learned over the years, too, of doing these, that Alaska is one of those bucket lists and one of those almost rites of passage for Minnesotans. I think everybody in Minnesota has an affinity and a love for Alaska and wants to get there at least one time in their life, if not several times. So it makes sense that um, we have most people here from from Minnesota and that it is really resonates with with all of us to to go visit Alaska. Well, well, thank you everybody for joining us. We appreciate your time. And thank yeah. you, Gretchen and Bursch, for hosting. Yes, thank you, everyone, for spending a little bit of time with us this evening. And again, if you have questions, reach out to a Bursch Travel Advisor. Thank you, Joe. Very good, as always. Very interesting. And uh, appreciate you spending time with us tonight, too. So thank you, everyone. And if you have anybody that you want to listen to this, Direct them to the Burst Travel website under Travel Seminars, and the recording will be up there probably in the next day or two, and they can listen and um, listen to the parts they're interested in. Or if you want to re-listen, if you miss some things, feel free to, to just pop in and view that too. So thank you, everyone. Good night.